Hello, and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. What's up? What's up? What's up, Delora? We are back. How goes it? It's going. (laughs) How about you? I'm good. Obviously, it's Tuesday and we are doing a recap. And I'm really going to rely on your expertise quite a bit in this one because we're talking about parenting and only one of us on this podcast is a parent i mean i'm a plant parent but not a real parent so you know i'm looking to you for your wisdom i know this is not a favorite film of yours but we're gonna get into this one a little bit guys it's old dads film that released on netflix october 20th we're doing back-to-back netflix projects because we did no hard feelings yeah and now we're and, doing old dads. You know, they're both in that raunchy comedy yeah. area, you know, arena. Yeah. It's a vibe because this takes us into, it's going to take us into, we're going to do one more that's non-holiday and then we're going to end the year on holiday. Like, I really cannot wait to do the release with Eddie Murphy and Tracy, Tracy. Ellis Ross. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's going to be, don't hold me to it, guys, if we change our minds, but I'm thinking (laughs) that'll be our holiday film for the year. So anyway, let's get into this one. Quick summary. When a middle-aged father and his two best friends sell their company to a millennial, (laughs) they soon find themselves out of step and behind the times as they struggle to navigate a changing world of culture, career, and fatherhood. This is the directorial debut for Bill cast Beale stars as Jack Bobby Cannavale as Connor Bokeem Woodbine as Mike Katie Azelton as Leah Rain Edwards as Brittany shout out to Rain Edwards I've seen her progression from the soaps to being in truth be told to this and good for you girl you doing your thing out here snowfall apparently I forgot about Snowfall, but it's also because I still have not watched a lot of Snowfall. I got Mm -hmm. into it in like the third season when I was when I was at the hairdresser. So yes, (laughs) correct. (laughs) She had a big arc in Snowfall. Miles Robbins as Aspen and Rachel or Raquel. I'm not sure which way. Rachel or Raquel Harris as Doctor Schmickle Turner. Reviews: Rotten Tomatoes, 26% critic score. 86%, 86%, not 86, 87% audience score, and 80% of Google users gave this film a thumbs up. Delora, what is your grade for old dads? Ashley, I was quite shocked that you recommended this movie for us to recap. <laughs> I know we have a spectrum in the type of movies we like, and I don't mind a raunchy comedy. However, I did not enjoy this raunchy comedy and it just didn't, it didn't land. It didn't stick. I mean, I hate to be that millennial, but I didn't understand all the references. I literally was Googling uh, the hot girl. Her name was what? Samantha Samantha Fox. I Googled her as well. (laughs) I was like, I don't know who she is. (laughs) I Googled her as well. And I did feel a little bit guilty because I have we both have a healthy understanding of pop culture through the ages okay we do um but this movie wasn't for me and with that I gave it a d I haven't given a movie a d in a long time this is true these are the facts I think for me for one 
I chose this movie because it was quick and I've been traveling, right? That, that's just to be completely honest with y'all. It was one of the <laughs> things I had seen and I was like, all right, we're just going to roll with this. But I, like I said, even last week, I did find a lot of humor in it. Like particularly with some of the scenes of new age ways of parents behavior versus yes. what he wanted to do. Like the, there was laugh out loud scenes for me with that. Like this whole apology he did at the preschool and stuff like, oh my God, that had yeah. me rolling. So, so that's where the humor lied for me. As I said, also previously, some of it, I was like, oh, we still making jokes like this in 2023. I cannot believe y'all are getting away with some of it. So I did feel like some of it was cringy and inappropriate, but as a whole, I just think it's interesting because a lot of times we don't touch on a lot of more male centric content and the fact that this deals with like this discrepancy and like generational differences and stuff. I just thought it was interesting and worth the conversation. So for me, I gave it a C because again, I did find humor in it and um, not a man don't know what it'd be like to become a dad in my 40s and potentially 50s. But I could see this being very real for many fathers. So I thought it was funny, inappropriate, but interesting. Three words to describe it for me. So let's get into the good, good spoiler alert for anybody who has not yet seen Old Dads. So this movie centers on Jack, Bill Burr's character. He became a father, as I mentioned, at the ripe old age of 46. And wow. his parenting style seems a bit out of touch in the opening scene he tells his son to rub some dirt in a fresh wound and then he trips the kid who pushed his son in the first place <laughs> meanwhile we see his friend connor his wife allowed their child to scream throw sticks at people and fully express his quote unquote ever evolving moral code to Laura what did you make of this opening scene and the differences in parenting that we are witnessing I'm reminded of this trend that's on social media that talks about generation x and how like like we always talk about boomers and millennials and gen gen z why don't we ever talk about gen x and gen x is like like we were the generation that uh, bullied in your face. Like, you know, <laughs> we were the generation that fought fist to fist. Like, you know, it was essentially like the wild, wild west for them compared to like even the millennials and, you know, the Gen Zers. And so that tickles me because it's like, yeah, you trip them because he hits your son. And it's like, if your mom not going to do it, I'm going to do something about it. I obviously did not subscribe to uh, Connor's baby mama's parenting because it's Snaps. like the, the lack for me. Mm. Oh, I snap, but no, at her husband, she was snapping. Oh, at no, 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 no. <laughs> she, she metaphorically castrated him like yeah. in public too. It's like, where's the respect? Um, <laughs> yes. But you know the parents is always thinking their kid could do no wrong they are breeding monsters uh, <laughs> <laughs> generation it's like yes. it's the lack of accountability for me it's like oh no you did something wrong there are consequences to your actions so I'm, I'm I literally very... said out loud in that scene, I said, oh, he's about to be a serial killer, right? And she's going to be that mom in an interview, like, my son, I would have <laughs> never thought, my not my baby, like that little monster who's throwing sticks at grown women. What are we talking about? Like, and outrageous, a pregnant outrageous, right? And so for her to allow him to scream and yell and do all this stuff, I couldn't be friends with that mom. Like, I know that they were couple friends, but I ain't Ooh, no one. Ashley, Ashley, if something happens Ashley. to my kid, I, if something happened to my kid, ma'am, that's <laughs> me and you. <laughs> like, that is a uh -uh. real conversation, especially when you befriend mothers because your kids are in the same class and things like that. And it's like, if you have different parenting styles, it's like, I don't know how we could be friends. Yeah. <laughs> over here stressing out over here. Uh, so yeah, that's a real thing. I talk to my sister about that all the time. It's like, 
Oh yeah. Especially, like, especially even small stuff like soda. Like I know people who've given their kids like Pepsi. I'm like, you know, they clean car batteries with that, right? Like I don't, I'm, <laughs> I am nowhere near a crunchy mom, but there's just some universal what's crunchy, truth. What's a crunchy mom? I don't know if they still use that term today, but in media before it's 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 the Kourtney Kardashian no sugar no salt organically made I think Gwyneth Paltrow okay I mean the snacks thing is real right you'd be like so what are you gonna if my kids come over to your house what are they gonna be fed what's the environment like yes I can imagine all of those things. And in this case, I feel like there was a level of disrespect that that mom had towards everybody else who was not her child that, again, I couldn't get down with. Like, you disrespect your husband with the snapping and all this. I was like, oh, my God. And then you're disrespectful towards the family and house that you're in, that you're allowing your child to behave like this and disrespect their home, them, their child, like, so we just overall have a problem. Yeah. And I would <laughs> say if I were to befriend a parent, I would definitely befriend Jack before I befriended that chick all day, every day. These are the um, facts. Based off of this, you know, what we've seen so far in their parenting, it's like, okay, no, it's I'm not hanging Them's out with you. And, and I don't want your kid at my house. Yeah. Like, yeah, Jack, you need to get some alcohol and some Neosporin for your son. But otherwise, at least, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, a play date and me feeling like, you know, your kid may start killing animals and then next try to kill my kid because that's the road we're going down, you know. So, (laughs) all right. So Jack and his buddies, Connor and Mike, they sold their company. So they had a throwback jersey business for 23 years. That's amazing. First of all, congratulations to them yes. as business owners. It's very successful. Absolutely. And um, their new boss, Aspen, immediately fires, or I'm sorry, liberates everyone born before <laughs> 1988. Delora, when I tell you I felt attacked, I had to sit with this. Actually, my mouth was on the floor. I was like, how dare he? Exactly. Everybody born before 1988. First of all, we are in our prime career-wise right now. Period. How? <laughs> I was like, I know people be trying to make me feel. I literally talked to my mom about this on the phone because I felt the same way. I was like, I know people may try to make us feel old in many ways in life. But one way I'm not it. old is yes. in my career, baby. Exactly. We are exactly. hitting prime time. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I felt attacked and I didn't appreciate it. Woo! But what I think is so funny is the representation of the duration um, that he's supposedly in. Because I thought he was supposed to be a millennial. So he he's obviously trying to weed he out is. the geriatric millennials, which we do not actually identify as. So yeah, that's beyond me. Millennials start in 1980, I believe, or 81. Yes. So. Yeah. So, but I think it's funny because it's like, do you, do you see the, the underlying sinisterness of being overly kind? Like, just like, oh, we're very aware of, you know, people's feelings, but then it's like, it's all in the phrasing, but the intentions are still the same. So it's like, yeah, Gen X might say, you know, knock him out on the side of his head. Aspen represents the same thing, but he may just phrase it in a different way. Like, oh, you need to release yourself in a physical liberate. way. And liberate. You liberate like, you. He said, we got them access to ZipRecruiter. They'll be fine. Who uses right? ZipRecruiter? Like, where's the, where's my severance package? Because I'm about to sue the shit out of you for age discrimination. What are we that talking is what about? I am saying, like, it's the audacity first day that this and is what you're choosing to do. What's killing me is like, if you were truly aware, real talk, uh, the generations before you are going to be in the workforce even longer because ain't nobody retiring. Hmm. There's no social security. Who's going to afford it? it? Yeah, I think also 
with this, I was wondering from your perspective, because they talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the scene, would you remain an employee if you sold your company? Like, I think I always have felt like, oh, I probably want to keep a stake and like have equity in my company. Like I literally heard um, the owner of Slutty Vegan talking about this on a podcast this week. Like, I think I would always want some level of ownership, but to still work day in and day out after I sold my company somewhere, I'm not sure I could do that either. What were your thoughts about that? I think it's something to consider if you don't know what you want to do next. You know, Mm. if it's better than staying at home doing nothing, why not still, you know, figure things out? I mean, it's, it's the question of like, what do you do when you finally get a windfall, right? Like, do you, I'm retiring. (laughs) I'm ready to retire. (laughs) I'm ready. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Like I can figure out my next moves on a beach somewhere. Absolutely, get out of here! <laughs> like the world got us our minds twisted. I do not need to work for the rest of my life. Let me tell y'all but that flat out. We also have to remember the two out of the trio have young kids, so their flexibility, quote unquote, is a little different, right? And well, they're absolutely, with people who there are- have jobs in their, <laughs> yes. you know, communities. There are other- there are other factors. And the fact that Jack mentioned that the only reason why he was even down to sell the company is to pr- put his son through private school is, you know, something major to be said, because obviously yeah. he felt like he needed more finances than what they had had while they were still running the business. Right. So that made sense. But yeah, I was just curious because I was like, it's an interesting predicament to find yourself in after being your own boss for, you know, 20 plus years. So Let's talk about Jack's relationship with the preschool principal, okay? He was a couple minutes late for school pickup and their back and forth turned into him calling her the C word. Now, I know I cuss a lot on this podcast. I cuss a lot in life, but the C word, I cannot get down with. Like that just does not roll off the tongue for me, so. It's not very desirable. Like, I don't get it. Like, obviously my favorite curse word is fuck, um (laughs) because it can mean so many things uh (laughs) but who actually uses that in a sentence like I guess he does I mean I know I saw I have a few Caribbean friends and it's more prominent for them and their culture to use it and use it like really loosely like they like when our friends is like see i won't say the b word but the c word yeah that's just you know a normal thing so it's Wait, also they cultural say bitch yeah correct correct but they would say the c word yes correct oh my correct. god so i would rather also just, cultural differences but in i would his rather case, just say the kitty cat one if i had to say anything but uh in his case like, he's just being rude obviously it wouldn't i mean <laughs> it went from zero to 60 real quick for me yeah i'm like well that escalated quickly and he did it in front of people not to say privately it would have been any better but it's the public humiliation for me that i'm just like sir you need to work on your anger management issues he definitely took it to a whole nother level and because of that had to make a public apology in front of all the parents and students so you you said you do feel like jack has anger issues but do you also feel like the principal was doing the most in any capacity with um the conversation of course she came off as self-righteous and it's like he is a paying member of your community of your school it's one of those things where you know when respect is given it's also received like she didn't respect him and he definitely did not respect her. (laughs) Yeah. I think it it was a couple of things for me with the fact that it was such a small thing, right? It's a couple, I'm a couple minutes late. You know, you couldn't just kind of let that go. It was the, you know, nagging me a little bit about it, but he definitely went from zero to a hundred real quick and it was inexcusable, (laughs) the way that he uh, escalated that conversation. And the public apology was hilarious though. Oh my. And she could have just let that be a warning, right? And off he would have gone and never been two minutes late again. 
<laughs> but you could tell she wanted she wanted the opportunity to tell him about herself. She was like, "Yeah, uh, did you read the guidebook? Well, if you'd read the guidebook, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. the whole. It was public humiliation for him too, though. Though, so she kind of what is it? <laughs> if you smelt it, dealt it. She started it. <laughs> yeah she she wielded power and she enjoyed it i think is the case with dr schmickel turner but the public apology portion with everybody from the lady saying you know the c word is like the n word for women um fun fact guys bill burr is married to a black woman in real life so is he? he is so fascinating and appreciated that he um gave her just a little snippet of why that's not the case <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then you had white woman tears over here, breaking down, crying, can't even get through a sentence, right? Of, I'm just so upset this happened in front of us. And then the black man, which I don't know where y'all got this black man from, <laughs> but talking about his, you know, feeling attacked with his, you know, the fact that he called her stumpy, you know, as someone who deals with, you know, body issues, he felt attacked. So that whole situation with the different parents and their perspectives I found to be quite hilarious. I go back to the four agreements. It's like, don't take nothing personally. It's it's exhausting. Like, sir, that was a reach. But I think it was <laughs> trying to show the culture that we're in, especially in the in these internets, right? Where it's Absolutely. like an artist will say something in a song and it'd be like, this community is offended and this community is offended. And I I do feel like in some cases, black people are always championing other groups. You know what I mean? Because we're like, hey, listen to us because we haven't been heard for centuries at this rate. But I think they were just definitely exaggerating like what goes on on these internets. Everybody Mm -hmm. wants to feel heard and feel seen. And it's a powerful tool, but it also can be overwhelming to keeping it simple, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody definitely had their feelings and their opinions. So funny scene. The member of the trio, right? Who seemed like he had his ish together, Mike, right? He was bragging about, oh, my son, this son goes to this school. This son goes to this school. Look how well my ex-wife and my girlfriend get along. Yet he somehow got his girlfriend pregnant even though he has a vasectomy and has a mean pullout strategy, apparently my mom watched this with me. She was like, so he pulls out, even though he has a vasectomy. (laughs) He was already, he was already questioning the, the, the effects of that vasectomy in the first place. That's funny. He was utterly, he was utterly devastated. And what confused me the most, though, was that his, his dream car was a Ford Fusion. Like, no shade to Ford. But that was the most confusing part of everything that he was going through. This fully loaded Ford Fusion SEL that he got from CarMax. You know, when I was car shopping 10 years ago, because I'm, I'm still rolling with my my Rogue E, got a brand new 2013 Rogue, and she's perfect, okay? <laughs> When I was car shopping, I was looking for an SUV and I was looking at a RAV4 and I decided not to get it because of a Kanye rap. (laughs) He's like, what am I supposed to do? Push a RAV4? Like, I was like, oh, I can't do it. Wow. The influence of Kanye at one point. At one point. He had me drinking white Russians, so I feel it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and i was like i can't believe and mind you i am not easily swayed by rock, rap lyrics at all right like but that still tickles me to this day so i'm particular about my cars and for fusion ain't nowhere near <laughs> nowhere near an aspiration for me personally <laughs> I know when Connor was like, it's cool. I'll just get one next time I need a rental when I drive to Tampa. I was like, the shade. <laughs> the shade. But what did you think of Mike's predicament? I mean, Mike thought he was done. He said, I'm with this young tenderoni. She don't want kids. She don't want to get married. And then, wham, pulls the curtains. I mean, she did do a 180, though. <laughs> like... If you thought you were living your best life thinking you were scots-free, I would feel, I 
empathize with him for a moment. You know, I didn't <laughs> like how he reacted, but he was justified. He said, take I, a I test. Just... Hey, mine, take a test. <laughs> Who has just impregnated think... you, ma'am? Well, I, I'm not agreeing with him and how he handled that. But what I'm trying to say <laughs> is the stress of knowing, like, I thought I was done and no, I'm not. He was having a heart attack. What, he, what was <clears throat> he flew too close to the sun. That's all. Mm, he was having a good old time, dicking her down, and only she's beautiful. To be she beautiful. is. Thought, she is. Thought but he was doing something. That conversation at the bar cracked me up too. When they were like, "Listen, kids are great. You know, they say funny shit. You know, they're great." And he was like, "Jackie Vase, ten years since you had your kid," <laughs> and. Connor, I don't know what you're putting in your face, but it's going to kill you. Like that whole conversation, like Bo, Bo, Bo Keem, the what his delivery was just cracking me up because it's like, I really, I mean, this is, this is earth shattering, right? You're in your fifties. You think you are. That's the part free. that was killing me. I'm like 50 year old parent. Like, yeah. Who Chile? I, yeah. mm. but you know who did it? Janet did it. Now, am she I did. a multi-platinum artist who's been working since I was five? No, but oh but wait, she wanted the it. baby daddy is also a billionaire. Yeah, so but she wanted it. That's the difference. Mike, this Mike didn't want no more kids. He said my my kids almost killed me. I did. I, <laughs> He thought he was out the game. So to be forced back into it, I mean, I totally understood, but it was comical at the same time. So Jack, Connor, and Mike all found themselves liberated uh, from their company after some offensive conversations on a car ride were recorded. Aspen also grabbed TV camera footage from another employee's apartment who had a good old time rapping and saying the N-word. This was wildly overreaching. Like, how could you possibly, how could you possibly be capturing footage of your employees without their consent, not only in a rental car, but in one's home? Exactly. I'm the type of person that made sure my camera is covered up, even if I have to put a post a note. <laughs> Do you? On it, yes. Yeah, not ideal. I don't think they should have been fired, but then, you know, who knows if they had it in their contract and it was small print, right? So. Well, that whole morality call situation, I understand. But again, the fact that I feel like it was a setup, right? Like, I feel like you knew what you were doing, Aspen, and you guys were trying to get rid of them. And so you figured, hey, they're probably going to say something that will be a fireable offense on this on this ride because why would you have sent them out to be the ones to try to find this guy it was a whole scenario guys if you haven't seen the movie of them going to get a guy who is off the radar and doesn't want to be famous for a campaign right and so they sent them out and so I feel like it was just a setup in the first place and again something I would sue over like because that just there's no way this is legal for y'all to be recording me in this rental and for the guy recording me at my house yeah even though obviously wildly offensive what he did as well so jack's issues with the principal come to a head at a school fundraiser where she basically insinuates that her recommendation for their son for kindergarten will not be a good one and jack's wife as a result wanted his ass out the house was he wrong in this scene i felt like he wasn't wrong because now you playing in my face. Like now you are basically holding my child's future over me and in my hand in your hands. Cause again, I think she's like she has a power trip. She's on a power trip. I agree. I agree. But she has always been on that power trip. <laughs> it's just now an uh unwaverly focused on him, which is a problem, obviously, because he's the one that you do not need to have. Uh, that close of attention because he's gonna fuck up and he did do you feel like he, do you feel like his <laughs> wife should have had his back you feel like leah should have supported him more with the situation with the principal 
Uh, yes and no. So yes, because obviously you want the person you're spending your life with to support you at least minimum in public, right? But you could tell she was sick of his shit. <laughs> <So> <laughs> She was like, uh, well, you know what I mean? So, and she was pregnant. She was tired. She was tired. Actually. <laughs> she said, what you busted in this house where he's like, yeah, you locked me out. She's like, yes, I didn't. I don't, I don't want you here. I don't want you to be here. Um, cut to the cliche strip club scene, right? Cause now all the guys go and trying to figure their shit out. So they end up gambling and then going to the strip club and, they run into good old Aspen who found himself also liberated from the company for culturally appropriating spirit animal on some t-shirts. I feel like this just showed again, the, to your point, the kind of snowball of their style of leadership where everything ends up being offensive, right? Like everything ends up being an issue. Everything is fireable. Um, and not to say some of the stuff is not offensive, right? Because it is. But I'm saying, I think they were trying to show that there can be extremes to it where at some point you ain't gonna have no employees because <laughs> you're gonna find something, some reason to let everybody go at some point uh, if you're, um, you know, trying to monitor everybody and do all this crazy stuff to uh, to watch your employees. I was actually surprised that they were so insistent on the whole spirit animal thing. I'm like, woke 101, spirit animal is not something <laughs> you play with. You know what I mean? Like people used it so flippantly and then everyone got the wake up call and you would think someone named Aspen would have gotten that. <laughs> that call so do you think aspen is his birth name because i don't uh i think it's possible i i do new age parents absolutely mm. bless god bless um because of them being out and at the club and all that they jack missed the birth of his second child but of course crazy you know, the women the women are so forgiving when they come in there looking crazy with glitter and blood on their faces and stuff first of all i was like i know he ain't going into this room with booty juice and glitter on him expecting <laughs> to touch his brand new baby <laughs> it's like he sure did he sure did yeah the no black movie. nurse the black nurse tried you know she tried was that his wife ah that's a good question i don't think so Funny if it is, but I don't I don't remember her looking like that, but I could be wrong. Mike even proposes to Brittany, but Brittany was like, nah, you're not, I'm not, you better do this when you can clean yourself up. You're not doing this in the hospital. Like, get yourself together. How much time had passed, though? Because she was hella pregnant in that scene. I was like, I thought. I was confused, you just too. Took the test. Yeah, I have no idea. It's like eight months and gone by. Okay. So to wrap up this movie, the preschool principal was busted for embezzling school money. Okay, surprise, surprise. I don't like ugly. Jack did start therapy to deal with his anger issues. And the guys sued their former company for age. That, that is his was wife. his wife. Hilarious. Hilarious. That was his wife. Okay. See, I said I could be wrong. Look at her making her cameo. Um, and the guys sued their former company for age discrimination and got some of their equity back, which, again, I was happy because if there was nothing else about this movie out that bothered me, I was like, oh, y'all not going to just push them out their yeah, own company like that. That I was, was insane. Dirty. 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 All right, Delora, give me any final thoughts you have on Old Dad. You ready for a sequel? No, thank you, Alex. Four thousand. <laughs> I appreciated the effort. I know this was Bill Burr's first directorial debut, right? Mm -hmm. Directorial debut. But, um, you know, it wasn't for me and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Those are my final thoughts, Ashley. <laughs> how did this stack up for you to any other, like, buddy guy movies, like The Hangover and, you know, just those kind of more, like, raunchy guys doing the most shenanigans type of films? So I I was reminded of The Hangover, old school, knocked up with the baby twist. 
you know, I can see it in the similar light. I will say that I did enjoy the movies I listed more because I feel like I got more of the the references, you know, around the age range and everything. <laughs> I hate to mm-hmm. say it. I, I, I think that's the one thing about this movie that I feel like I'm a little bit embarrassed by because I'm like, I love a good quote unquote old person's film. And I don't think Philly 50 is considered old person because when I'm talking old person, I'm talking about anything starring Diane Keaton. I am right there. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Absolutely. Jane Fonda, Lily, like I am front seat. But and I get all of those type of movies, but this one, I don't know. I it just couldn't, it didn't click for me. And I feel kind of bad about it because I'm like, you would think I would relate more, but Mm-hmm. maybe it's a level of misogyny I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah some of that for sure <laughs> some of that for sure um yeah I think this is definitely as far as the the ones you listed and some of the other ones that I can think of uh it ranks a little bit lower I think for me too there was like a lack of uh not as much adventure like you think about some of like the hangover and stuff like there it was an adventure more of an adventurous type of buddy situation so yes they did do the again cliche strip club trip but other than that you know it was pretty stagnant in terms of like the environment so I think that was one thing that maybe made this not quite as fun to me but like I said I got some laughs out of it and it seems like it was probably fun behind the scenes for them to make this movie together, I'm assuming. Probably, yeah. Cass probably had a really good time. I did love how uh, Connor's character was so vain. Like, that was funny to me. He <laughs> used his money from the lawsuit to to do his neck. to Because, yeah. He did not want to get older. He was that character who was trying to remain as youthful as possible. Him trying to relate to the co-workers or the other people in the office particularly the black woman specifically the black to, woman <laughs> talking about did you hear the latest from Lil baby and some other baby he tried to name does not exist and but justice Trying for android hard. i did appreciate that saying justice for android that was funny that mm-hmm. was hilarious <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. open source mm-hmm. i see y'all um but again it makes it seem old doesn't it it's all good anyway so my final thoughts are just it was it was interesting again I thought it was gonna be um a fun conversation to have so I'm glad we got a chance to chat a bit about old dads and that is it for this recap guys Delora what do you have for the people for Hidden Gems I don't have one this week Ashley how about you So I'm just going to bring up the Miami Book Fair again. If you guys did not listen to our last episode, I attended the Miami Book Fair, went to the talks by Jada Pinkett Smith, moderated by Lena Waithe and Kerry Washington, moderated by um, Eva Longoria. Really great. I did not even know this event existed. So I'm glad I got a chance to um, attend. This was the 40th year and I will try to go back next year for more because it's like a week long of, you know, discussions and there's a street fair and all this stuff going on. And I did have a bit of a run in with Jada Pinkett Smith accidentally because, yeah, I thought so. I only saw her through her dress and feet in the stall. So here's what happened. So, my friend who used to work at the college, when we were going to the bathroom, the floor we were on was crazy and crowded. And so she was like, oh, we'll go up to the next floor. And so we were up there, it was just us. And I was still in the stall and I heard her speaking to somebody and a lady was like, is it just you? And she was like, oh yeah, my friend is in the stall. I didn't know what was going on. So I come out and I'm washing my hands and I look over and I realize, oh shit, Jada is in here, right? Because this is like her handler person who's standing by the door. And so I hear Jada like say, start speaking or whatever. And I'm like, Ashley, be cool, be cool, right? Don't make it weird in the bathroom. And so I just- Especially in the bathroom. Especially in the bathroom. I don't want to be that person, right? And so, but so I'm, I'm like, you know, taking my time a little bit. And just as I'm about to leave, I'm like, hear her talking a little bit more and I'm like well hey Jada and she's like hey and she giggles and I'm like oh thank you that's all I needed 
And so I walk out and her security is like standing by the door and they're like, ladies, have a good one and this and that. So that was my little bit of a running with Jada because I really thought that we were going to get a chance to like get our book signed and all that. But because I think of the way the event went and the timing, they had the, it was pre-signed. Both of the books that I got, because I got copies of both of their memoirs were already pre-signed. But my friend who was in there who saw her- Jada and Carrie though, it's not like they're not going to be sitting somewhere for hours. (laughs) yeah but my friend who saw her come in did say she was tiny and she had on this like flowy yellow dress she looked very like pretty and ethereal and stuff but she did say she was tiny when she came in so did she look like even smaller in person terms of like because she has some fantastic cheekbones and yeah and like you know she looks the same to me. Like she's this not someone in, who, in person. When I, yeah, I mean, in, any, yeah. any of them actually. Like, it, first of all, I've already seen Lena Waithe. I just saw Lena Waithe earlier this year at the Black Film Festival. Yes. So I'd already seen Lena in person. And so Jada, Carrie, and even Longoria look exactly the same to me as they do like on screen. Like there wasn't some major difference. Carrie had a glow, which I expected because I love that. She always <laughs> looks gorgeous. But yeah, yes. all of them are beautiful, you know, just as beautiful in person as you would expect and imagine so yeah love that Mm -hmm. so yeah i'd encourage everybody to check out especially if you're you know a book lover and all of that i mean it's dope like they were gonna have uh joan baez i think after the events that i attended and they had some other folks henry winkler i think was gonna speak one day they had a bunch of authors and a bunch of people um who are just just a part of the book community and not coming and speaking as a part of um all the events that were going on so again i only got a chance to attend those two um, and I won't be able to attend anything else, but hopefully next year I'll be able to go to the full slate of, you know, events and things they have going on. So yeah, for anybody maybe who's I'll into, go with you. Absolutely. Into the literary world and journey. I think this is a great event. So, and it's Fun. Miami. It's freaking Miami. I mean, exactly. You know, it's always a time, always a vibe. So that's my one hidden gem guys we'll get out of here we appreciate you as always for sticking with us and supporting us we are taking a break for the holiday so happy holiday i don't know what everybody may call it these days you want to call it thanksgiving if you want to call it a get together with the fam if you want to call it you know another indigenous people's day whatever you (laughs) want to do Um, god bless be safe we hope you guys enjoy please share this episode with your family friends and loved ones we so appreciate it we look forward to talking to you next time but in the meantime be blessed bye